Welcome to Promo Insiders, an ASI media podcast that covers the issues that matter most to the promotional products industry. I'm executive editor Teresa Hegel, and today I'm speaking with Lou Elliott Sasuski, co-founder and CEO of Cool Perks, and a member of our Promo for the Planet editorial advisory board. Today, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the concept of stealth greenwashing, um, how marketers have gotten savvier at dressing up their branding in misleading or false sustainability claims, and what the promo industry needs to do to combat this trend. So thanks so much for joining us today, Lou. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here and really happy to be talking about greenwashing. It's one of my yeah. biggest pet peeves. It's, it, you know, I think all of us are starting to get a little bit more clued into when we are being falsely manipulated. We're being manipulated and lied to, really. I, yeah. I mean, I even think about it this past summer, I went to the farmer's market and there was a a uh, little stand and, you know, I'm always told, oh, just ask the farmer if they're organic because they might not be able to afford the organic certification yet or whatever else. And so I asked the, um, the people at the booth if they were organic and they said, well, we can't legally say that we're organic. I said, well, do you use pesticides, herbicides, you know, any of those, those things? And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, why'd you say that you can't legally just say no we're not right right, right. and that, that type of manipulation is getting yeah. really it, it's a lot it it's seemingly a lot more clear yeah when it so happens. yeah yeah no that's a that's a good point so they're kind of like hedging like oh we can't really say it well you also can't say it because you're not doing it you know? right, exactly. um but uh I guess just to like start everyone off, can you give us kind of a definition of what greenwashing is? Define, you know, what we mean when we're saying that. Yeah, it is painting a picture that you, your product, your business is environmentally sustainable. And it, I originally had thought about it as more sustainable than what you're saying. However, just the fact that you're saying that you're sustainable and you're not is greenwashing because a majority of products. I, I mean, I really, there, there aren't many that I can think of that are actually environmentally sustainable. So almost all sustainability claims are in some way greenwashing. But I mean, I guess part of what we need to do is to sort of evaluate how, how good some of these claims are and what we're trying to do, whether that rather than just saying like, oh, something's sustainable, so that's good. Well, what, what about it? do you like what about it can you measure what about this product yeah. is going to kind of work for your clients so it's not like yeah. not about saying like no product is good or worth selling you kind of have to evaluate right. them kind of based on what your needs are right exactly the the overall general terms eco-friendly sustainable green any of these terms really don't mean anything at this point unless they're like we're fully circular right like mm -hmm. When you're done, it goes back into the ground, into nature, naturally decomposes, not leaving any sort of trace behind. Or you can use it indefinitely. I mean, there's no real planned obsolescence with it. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, how how rampant would you say greenwashing is right now? Is it, do you think, I mean, I know you had said that, you know, people are more kind of attuned to, like, scoping it out. But do you think in some ways it's also getting sneakier and harder to identify? I think that companies are getting more clever with it. I mean, this is what we are seeing in lawsuits is people are actually starting to put numbers and saying that by 2050, we're going to be X, mm -hmm. you know, sustainable or, you know, whatever their claims are, makes you really think that they're doing something, they're putting something in place that is good for the environment and yet we're finding over and over that there's nothing in place and these these claims aren't are, aren't substantiated in any way um it, it, one of the things that i was thinking about with these uh particular claims is who they target right and like the purpose of greenwashing and how the um a, as a marketer and most people in the promotional industry, right? Like we are in that marketing field, right? right. We're painting a picture and it, it becomes clear that there's a lack of genuine um, um, 
creativity, I feel like in the marketing industry, when people are just like, oh, we're just going to tout this as green because we're going to target this ideal client, say, you know, somebody at Microsoft, because Microsoft has very, very specific sustainability goals. So if you're selling into Microsoft, you might want to feel the need to say that your products are green or you're doing something green. Um, however, it's really not targeting the client in a way that really affects their specific needs, right? So like when we talk about promo products, right? Are you trying to create an appreciation activity and focus your advertising more on how this is going to create more of a sense of appreciation, demonstrate appreciation while also demonstrating the values of Microsoft, right? So you have to walk that line of what this product is doing, how you're helping your client advance their their goals as well. And that is something that um, I think that people fail on constantly. Um, yeah, and it's just creating a lot of complacency on both yeah. sides, right? Yeah. Like, do we have to dig harder into this? Do we actually really want to? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, I know, like, I think we're seeing a little bit more in terms of, you, you know, like bigger retail companies getting kind of criticized or even, you know, lawsuits related to greenwashing. For example, I think Lululemon has kind of been under the fire. They've, uh, you know, people have accused them of their Be Planet initiative, um, yeah. you know, talking about how, you know, that's greenwashing because it's not, the actions don't really align with their claims of being environmentally friendly. Um, are you familiar with that one at all? Yeah, something about like 60% of their products being um, using recycled materials, but there's uh, there's no trail, paper trail saying that that's true. And also the fact that a majority of their, their uh, products are made with plastics in general. So they're not, they don't have a long lifespan. Mm -hmm. that in and of itself makes it unsustainable of a product. Right, right. I, I think Coca-Cola also had a similar type of, um, of lawsuit against them where while they were trying to create their bottles out of sustainable, you know, like out of recycled bottle, they're still producing an enormous amount of single use plastics. And, right. you know, if 91 plus percent of these products end up in landfills every year, you're, you're not sustainable. Right. Right. So yeah, I, totally. Um, another one that I had seen, this is a couple of years old now, but I think it was in uh, 2022, the FTC actually sued Kohl's and, and Walmart because mm -hmm. um, they were marketing dozens of uh, rayon textile products as bamboo. You know, and yep. you know, people hear bamboo and think it's, oh, that's sustainable because it, you know, regenerates so quickly. And I mean, some bamboo things, like maybe like a cutting board, that's probably, right. you know, a, a good use of it. But the kind of all of those textiles, like the sheets and the and the t-shirts that are made out of bamboo, typically are using a very like hazardous, uh, like a lot of pollutants and toxic chemicals to make that bamboo rayon. So they were actually, I believe, it was a couple of million dollars that they were fined by the FTC. But I mean, I I feel like we are still seeing a lot of people, you know, selling things that are you know bamboo textile, and I don't know if they're out and out saying like this is green but i think the implication is still there people still have that perception that oh right. a bamboo t-shirt is still good for the environment right yeah i i actually remember and i don't think this is this went along with the walmart one but i think that there was a particular like uh bamboo cloth that was like bamboo mm. and there was maybe 0.01 percent bamboo in that cloth and it was yeah entirely um like nylon or something like that yeah. um so it wasn't even that they had created some sort of rayon material it was that they didn't try at all they right, just right. said that it was bamboo and that i do remember being really shocked at like wow this is this is a little crazy it actually made me start digging into well what are uh, what are the materials in a lot of our fabrics because you know, 
I didn't grow up in a time where everything was a hundred percent cotton, you know, like we were in the nineties, we had windbreakers eighties and nineties. So, so like nylon was a big, uh, a big product, but like even today our really expensive jeans. I had a pair of like $200 jeans that I noticed the other day had like a snag or a bulge or something where the stretchy plastic had worn out and created this like lump in the middle of my thigh. (laughs) I'm like, what is this, right? These are really expensive jeans and I've only had them for two and a half years. There's absolutely no reason for this to, to be a thing. So looking at the products, we have so much plastic in our clothes and that, that is being now a new thing where everybody's like, oh, this is made with 50% recycled um, plastic water bottles. On one hand, do you think great because it's giving life to plastic, recycled plastic materials, right? Because we mm-hmm. we have so much plastic that we there's not really an economy for it, right? right? Like right. there's not there's not a whole ton of uh, people drawing recycle recycled materials um but it also gives us the sense of like oh now we don't even have to Mm -hmm. think about it right we can still buy our coke or our plastic uh water when we're out at the store and how easy is it because they're right in front of the cashier when i'm thirsty standing there waiting i'm gonna grab a glass you know a bottle of water and uh, so it, it's this double-edged sword, right? We have these, this plastic to get rid of, and yet we're, we're using it as this means to keep creating more plastic waste. Right, right. I mean, it's not like we have to do something with all of the, the plastic that's already here, but at the right. same time, it's there's kind of a complacency that comes when you think like, oh, it's being solved, even though if you, you can look at the numbers and there's no way what's being made, you know, new is there's like not there's just not that supply chain for. Like all of the 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 textiles or whatever you're going to do with to recycle right. them, it's just it's not it's not kind of making that big of a dent in it yet. Right. Um, and there's, there's, I, I mean, when I talk about like, there's really no such thing as a sustainable product at this point, like sustainability is probably the last thing that you want to um, market yourself as, unless you really can be used indefinitely. Like there, you think about like growing a garden, there's no waste in nature. Mm-hmm. You grow tomatoes, the tomato plant can break down, you know, into the soil and regenerate the soil, right? Like, preserve the soil um health right and yet we as humans create a significant amount of waste and a majority of it comes from countries like ours that have the financial means to do so we're trying so hard to get ahead and move and advance and it really takes us out of this this place of thoughtfulness of like, mm-hmm. why am I doing this? How do I prevent doing this? Um, and it, it really is a, a huge problem, I want to say, for the middle class, which also makes it a problem for a majority of businesses because that's the target market is, right? The, this, um, like, think about it in marketing terms, right? Like, here's your target audience. It's going to be your more affluent country, your more affluent business. Um, and people that are really, really busy, right? And so yeah. you're trying to target them and target that convenience aspect. And um, I just like, I, I mean, right now my mind is spinning because I get like s- so frustrated at yeah, this right? yeah. because it it then becomes like there, it's everywhere, and you just kind of yeah. you're just seeing it and um it's hard to escape. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, I mean, to bring it back to, to the promo industry itself, obviously, you know, we've been talking about a lot of kind of the problems with, with greenwashing and some of these claims people are making, but I do, I mean, there definitely are sneaky, like kind of bad actors out there, but I do think that a lot of people are sincere in their efforts to try to be more sustainable, but they just don't necessarily have the, 
they're not educated to the level that someone that's really steeped in it is. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering, like, for promotional products, suppliers and distributors who are trying to market, like, a, a better way of, of selling these products, what can they do to avoid greenwashing in their own marketing while still kind of promoting, you know, lower impact or, or sustainable or whatever you want to call it products? Um, yeah, I've thought about this a lot. And I actually think the less you say about your sustainability efforts and let people find that out, like let people use it, discover it, do the work on your own, make a really great product. Because like I said, the the better the product is, the more, the longer it lasts, the more sustainable you actually are. You'll get more referrals. Go back to the messaging where you're solving a problem for somebody and and um, really focus on the aspects that your products do solve for, right? Like, you know, I, I think about this, you know, nimble charger battery pack and they're, they, they have huge sustainability claims but it's technology, right? So they yeah. have to be super careful about the fact that like their products will not be usable in a few years, right? And right. and yet they're doing everything that they can possibly on the back end to make themselves as sustainable as possible. But I just still think that the main purpose of this, they need to talk about that this is one of the best battery packs that you will ever use. It's the fastest. Right. It's like it's the longest lasting. These are the these are the marketing messages that are the oops the primary um, the the primary solution the primary problem yeah. that you are solving and really really focus on that first and then let people find out how well you're doing for the environment. Right. Otherwise, right. you end up with I mean, even even Allbirds, which was a company that was, you know, the the big sustainable shoe company. They were they were slapped with a greenwashing. I don't know if it was a lawsuit, but they were they were called out significantly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like the less that you can position yourself as a sustainable company, but do the things, yeah, the better. Well, you, I think one thing you do still need to do, I imagine, is have all that data about what you're doing and actually be able to, to back up, you know, mm -hmm. even if you're not like claiming it outright, you need, like you said, people need to be able to find out what you're doing. It shouldn't be, yeah. it's not the primary, you know, way you're marketing yourself, but it's not, it's also not an excuse to just, you know, not try to be sustainable at all anyway. So there, yeah, you should be doing right. these things. And you should right. be doing them in like a quantifiable way and you know have goals that that you're working towards For but sure. that shouldn't be like what you're basing everything on right it shouldn't be your messaging you mm -hmm. it, you should you should be doing that as a business that should be part of your business goals and you can list that like your values what your what your actions are doing and and then make that a huge part of your internal systems your culture and your business However, as far as marketing messaging goes, I totally believe that people should shy away from sustainability claims completely until we have some sort of system in place um, that that really calls that out and actually has a quantifiable, measurable um, a, a system and it goes across, it's used throughout all right. industries right, right? Like a universal until, kind until, of thing. yeah until we have that i i think that um making statements about your sustainability actually gets you in more trouble it's you it, it puts you in a position of liability yeah 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 and i mean that is kind of one of the big problems i think with you know the term sustainability and you know eco-friendly and all of these things that we use i think part of it like everybody means something a little different when they're saying it. Mm -hmm. um, so you could be, like I said, you could be totally sincere and think this is a great thing, but it may not me measure up with, you know, the person you're talking to with what they think, you know, sustainability yeah. means. But exactly. yes, it also is just not, it's not quantifiable right now. It's not backed up by any kind of like, you know, third party standard. Right. 
So right. um, to just say, yes, we're sustainable, that's that doesn't do it. That's not going to help. But exactly. um, but I do. But also, I think for a lot of uh, people in the industry now, you do have to have um, you do have to be doing some kind of yes. um, sustainable efforts and, and trying mm-hmm. to reduce your you know carbon footprint because that's what the end yeah. buyers are requiring, right? They they need that data. They want that data from you. So you can't you can't just use this as an excuse to be like, well, you know, sustainability claims don't work, so we're not going to do it at all. No, you still have to do it, and you still have to be able to back it up. But that Absolutely. shouldn't be the way that you are marketing exclusively totally. to your clients. Totally. When I got my when I uh, got my uh, certification for being a woman owned business and a minority owned business, and you know, like all of these. Uh, diversity certifications. Mm-hmm. I remember the best piece of advice somebody gave me was don't lead with that. Mm-hmm. Do not lead with your woman owned business, your, you know, um, veteran owned business, all of these other disclaimers that I get to uh, put out there because it matters. But it does, it, like I said, it's not the primary issue that they're trying to solve. And so if you let somebody, I mean, this is marketing one-on-one. If you let somebody know that you can solve their primary problem, and then all of a sudden they discover you have like, you make them feel good because mm-hmm. you are contributing to the world in a better way. You're helping a system along, whatever it is, they feel better. And that just wraps them in this feeling of like, yes, I made the right decision. I'm going to go with these people. And then you end up with really strong advocates and very strong loyalty for your brand. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Um, Well, I think we covered a lot of what I wanted to cover, but do you have anything else that you'd like to add to to wrap things up? Um, Just one thing is that the more we get into the, the sustainability, um, journey, I think the more we're going to start leaning on, and it's, uh, it's a preference of mine, start leaning on name brands, because Mm -hmm. even though we've had, you know, like, like we've said, Nike, Lou, Lemon, Adidas, Coca-Cola, like all of them have gone through this greenwashing thing. There's still a name and a face, face face-ish, right? Mm -hmm. To put behind these uh, companies. Whereas the more generic we go, the more like, you know, random. <laughs> yeah, like private kind of private yeah, label yeah, things that nobody really labeling. knows what it is. Only, yeah, not only private labeling, but like these like unknown entities that you get off of Amazon or you reach out to a factory in China for, like they don't have a name to put behind it. And so therefore any any sort of sustainability um, progress that we're going to make kind of gets diluted when when we don't take there's no accountability place. right because right. we don't where know where it's we, coming from exactly these 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 companies like just because uh adidas or nike is nike have had sustained or greenwashing claims against them they now have to fix it because they're a brand name you know we see them Mm-hmm. We know what's happening. And I think the more we focus on that in the promotional products industry, the better, the more we'll move money into these actions that make a difference. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Lou. This has been a great discussion. Yeah, thank you.